Good morning, everyone. This is Rob McDougall from Zank Financial here with your weekly economic update. Today is Monday, July 1st, 2024. So last week, we had a pretty busy economic calendar with mixed data points. And as we'll see, the markets were flat to mix last week, so hardly any movement. But in terms of the good data points last week, we had personal income and personal spending. We'll go through those numbers. Those were both in the right direction. Inflation, most importantly, was exactly as expected. In fact, I'm surprised the market didn't react a little more strongly to the upside because of it. But then also last week, we had uh, continuing jobless claims that were at their highest levels since November of 2021, suggesting the labor market slowdown is happening. We have a data point for that coming up this week. And also new home sales were pretty poor. So let's go through each of those really quick. New home sales last week. Uh, expectation was 640000 for uh, month of May. Came in at 619000 So that was disappointing. On Thursday, we had durable goods and durable good orders, ex-transportation. Now, the headline number, durable goods, month over month, was actually good. Uh, it was expected to come in slightly negative, negative 0.1, but came in positive at 0.1 but largely because of transportation. You strip out transportation, the expectation had been a positive 0.2 month over month. It came in at a negative 0.1. The big day, though, was Friday and was inflation, personal spending, personal income. But the PCE, PCE core, month over month, year over year, that data came out on Friday. Again, as expected, which I think is pretty favorable, uh, the PC, as we always mention, the Federal Reserve prefers this measurement of inflation for their policy setting purposes. And so that's really a key focus for investors. So PCE, core PCE, both came in exactly as expected on a month over month basis. PCE came in at 0.0, .0 month over month. Uh, PCE core uh, came in a positive 0.1. And then on a year-over-year -year basis, both of those, uh, core and headline PCE, came in at a positive 2.6% year-over-year. And recall, Fed target is 2.0. So supposedly you would think they might not want to lower rates until we hit that level. But we're pretty confident that at 2.6%, yeah, all things being equal, the Federal Reserve would likely lower interest rates, even if we don't get inflation lower than the 2.6% that we're currently at. So based on that economic information that we had last week, the Atlanta Federal Reserve took down their expectations for second quarter GDP that finished on Friday. So uh, the prior week, the Atlanta Federal Reserve projected, expected, guessed, we were growing at a 3.0% rate in the second quarter. They dropped that down to 2.2%. Pretty sure that's going to come in even lower next week. So clearly economic activity, slowing labor markets. We discussed that a little bit. Uh, in terms of inflation expectations, very much flat last week. So for the next 10 years, the average expected based on the U.S. 10-year fixed Eve, fixed. 10-year break-even fixed income, 10-year treasury minus 10-year tips. It came in at a 2.28. That's where it was a week before. So no change there. A little bit of change in terms of Fed funds rate changes and expectations. So we do have a Fed meeting at the end of this month. So on the 31st, CFOMC will make a rate decision. They're not going to make any change. It'd be highly unlikely. The odds actually went up a little higher that there won't be any movement uh, had been 87.6% the week before. It came in at 89.1% last Friday. But at the end of the year, there were actually kind of significant changes. So the odds of no rate cut happening at all actually went up a little bit. Now the probabilities are low. But the prior week, it was 4.8%, and that rose last week to 6.9%. Uh, also on that, the expectation of getting at least two cuts by the end of the year, that actually went down. It was, let's call it 68% the week before, came in just under 61% at the end of last week. Now, let's take a look at how the markets reacted to the economic news that we just went over. And as I prefaced, not much change anywhere. S&P 500 down six basis points, hardly moved. Developed markets up a little bit. Developed markets, XUS, up 45 basis points. 
Uh, emerging markets, exactly as the U.S., minus 0.6%, 0.06%. And then U.S. fixed income, actually, that was down and it was significant. Two-year yield in the U.S. last week was up two basis points, but the 10-year was up 15 basis points. So the Bloomberg U.S. Aggregate Bond Index was down 65 basis points last week, which now makes the year-to-date negative again, negative 0.7%. Also, the Bloomberg U.S. Long Treasury Index, we follow it. We don't invest in it, but we do follow it. Because that 10-year moved as strongly as it did, that index was down 2.02% last week. It's now down 5% for the full year. So uh, recap real quick. Uh, on a year-to-date basis, S&P uh, for the year is up a very strong 15.3% led by large cap growth. In particular, NASDAQ up 18.1%. Developed markets, XUS up 3.2%. In emerging markets, up a somewhat surprising 6.1%, with China actually being up uh, year to date 3.5%. Uh, on the Bloomberg, or on the fixed income side, the Bloomberg US Aggregate Bond Index, as I mentioned, down 71 basis points for the year. And the US Long Government Index that we follow, down 5%. So economic data coming out this week. It is a uh, another strong week, really packed uh, on Friday in terms of releases. Today on Monday, there is an ISM manufacturing PMI number coming out. Um, always remind viewers uh, that it's, um, it, it is scaled to 50, being the demarcation line between expansion and contraction. So under 50, contraction, over 50, expansion. We have been in contraction territory for a year and a half. Uh, so the expectation is we're going to come in again below 50 at 48.7 for the month of June. The month of May was close to 50. It was about as close as we've gotten the last year and a half. It was 49.1. So again, expected to come in at 48.7. We'll be watching initial jobless claims a little closer than we have been. That comes on Thursday. So the consensus estimate is 235,000. The week before was 233. And you might recall, only two months ago, we were averaging about 210,000 a week. So certainly, uh, we are seeing elevated new jobless claims here in the U.S. on a weekly basis. Now, Friday is, again, a big day, and a lot of it has to do with, with employment, labor markets. Non-farm payroll comes out. It'll be for the month of June. The month of May, we had 272,000 new jobs. For the month of June, the expectation is 195,000 new jobs. Unemployment rate in May was 4.0. It's expected to be the same for June. Average hourly earnings month over month in the month of May, that was a positive 0.4. Expected to be a little lower, positive 0.3. And average hourly earnings year over year, that is expected to drop from the 4.1% that we saw in May to 3.9% for the month of June. So that's it for the recap of last week, the markets last week, and a preview of the economic activity this week. Thank you very much for attending. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.